Welcome to the Sales Copywriting and Content Marketing Hacks Podcast, the go-to podcast for creating sales copy and compelling content that actually works to sell your stuff without any of the pain or frustration of staring at a blank screen. Hey, welcome, 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 everybody. Jim Edwards here along with my co-host, Mr. Stu Smith. Welcome, Stu. Hey, hey. Thank and you. This is our very first episode of the Sales, Copywriting, and Content Marketing Hacks podcast. And I think that intro might be a little long. We're going to have to work on that. But you know what? This is our first show. We're just getting it out of the way. So, wow. So this is pretty exciting. Um, I'm Jim Edwards. I've been selling online since 1997. And if we were a 1980s duo, I would be Hall and uh, Stu would be Oates. If we were a rock band, um, I don't know what we'd be, but if we were a rap group, I would be Run and he would be either D or MC. And so basically what we're going to be talking about in this podcast is all about how you can create amazing sales copy and compelling content that gets people to click and buy. And let's get one thing out of the way right up front. I am not here to teach copywriters the finer points of copywriting. That is not our purpose. Our purpose here is to help normal people or as normal as you can be use words and pictures to sell more online. That's the purpose. So if you're a copywriter, welcome. Have lots of copywriters that uh, I know and like and love. And I'm sure we're going to piss some copywriters off with some things that we say here. And that's okay. So I tend to talk a lot and Stu is kind of the, you're a little more reserved, but I think you're a little crazy too. You just don't ever let it on. Am I right? Yeah, I got a little shield up. <laughs> I, 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 I like to let it go every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I wanted to kind of give everybody a, a this, this episode's really about kind of where we, where we're coming from and why we're here and why we want to teach this stuff. And so I actually started selling online in 1997, but that's not actually true. I made my first attempt to sell online on America online in 1994. I was trying to hook people into an MLM. I mean, that'll show oh, wow. you. What, yeah, that was Woo. like, really, that was not cool. Uh, but <laughs> that was not good. But uh, that was, if, if truth be told, I made my first foray into the world of online marketing in 1994. I retired for three years and then uh, came out of retirement in 1997. Wow. And, I actually wrote a book on how to sell your house yourself. My, my girlfriend, now wife, in 1992 said to me, hey, you ought to write a book. I said, yeah, I'm pretty smart. I'll write a book. And so it took me four years to write the book. I piled up 40 rejections from different publishers. I just stopped counting. So I actually took the book, turned it into really a business card. I went down to Kinko's, as anyone would do in the 90s. If you wanted to self-publish your book, you went down to Kinko's. I had it. Uh, photocopied and then I had it comb bound with these cool construction paper covers and really quickly built this whole funnel around my book with for sale by owners. I would call them up, I'd talk to them, I'd send them a copy of my book, I'd go out and take a look at their house and actually took 51 listings my first year in real estate. And then in late 1997, um, I was at a fraternity party at homecoming, been out of school, I'd been out of school for what, eight years? And a fraternity brother of mine said, hey, my dad and I just, they owned a, an advertising agency. They had just bought a web server. I just didn't even really know what the web was. I mean, I had email, but, and uh, I said, hey, do you think I could sell my book online? He said, sure, I guess. And that kind of started the whole gauntlet of doing this. I was living in a trailer at the time with a leaky roof and a bad electrical system, but by God, I had, I had high speed internet. And, um, but you couldn't use the phone at the same time. Um, no, or could you? you? Could. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, DSL. No, we we actually had cable. We really? Got cable, real? Oh yeah, man. In the nineties. Oh yeah. You're yeah, high was, speed. And and the funny thing is, is nobody else in the trailer park had uh, cable internet. So man, we were jamming on the speed. That was back when they had you know the nodes and all the people when they got on it would slow down. We were the right. only ones. 
And um, so I started figuring this whole internet thing out. Everybody said, oh yeah, you, you started selling right away. Nope. First two years, it sucked, dude. All I did for two years was just figure stuff out. I had to try and put up web pages with front page 97. You remember that? Yep. And the way to learn that was I remember those, you'd go to Books a Million or Barnes and Noble and they had those big computer Bible books, like HTML Bible, front oh, page yeah. Bible, Adobe Bible, you know, these giant things. And what I would do, I, I went, I got the front page book and I would follow my wife around when she was going to thrift stores or the, the doing, the, it would take us like five hours to go grocery shopping because everything had to have a coupon. It was the only way we could afford to eat. So I would follow behind her in the grocery store, reading this book and highlighting it while I was pushing the cart. And that's how, literally how I taught myself to make web pages. And for two years, it absolutely sucked. And then I finally got it figured out, got my website up, got, got some things going and got it up to where I was making about $1,500 a month off of the, and that was about 2000. And then I went to a conference in Boulder, Colorado. I was working for a company that did a search engine promotion. I was actually a vice president. I was a vice president of special projects. That meant I was making $1,500 a month working for a boss that really didn't like me, but he couldn't replace me for that crappy amount of money. And so he got invited to speak at this conference in Boulder, Colorado, and I could speak and I had developed this product. In fact, this is the product that we developed right here. It's called the search engine directory promotion um, CD. It was a CD-ROM because nobody had high speed and you know there wasn't online video really back then. So I figured out how to burn all these instructional DVD uh, videos to the CD that people could pop in and watch them. And we got invited to speak, or well, he got invited to speak, but he couldn't speak. So he had me speak instead. And so I helped him build up the business. We got up to the point where we were doing a hundred thousand dollars in sales of these at, at $97, 97 bucks a pop. And so long story short, he fired me. Hmm. But that year I had made the decision that I was going to get really good at sales copy. I, I realized when I saw those guys, it was February of 2001. I said, you know what? I see these guys and they're making 40, 50, a hundred thousand dollars a month. And I saw them in the lunchroom at this conference and these guys are spilling food on themselves and they're just disgusting people. I said, if these guys, can make that kind of money, then I know I can. And I just decided I was going to get awesome at sales copy. So I decided I took my 20 page website that was selling the for sale boner book. I converted it over to a single one page long form sales letter and overnight sales went up two and a half percent. Overnight sales went up by 250%. Now that oh. was pretty amazing. All right. Damn. So I went from selling basically one book a day to two and a half books a day. But that's a big difference at when I was charging 30 bucks. I went from 30 bucks a day to 75 bucks a day. Third, but that's 30 days a month. That got sure. me up over the $2,000, almost $2,100. I mean, I got up to the point where it was, we moved out of the trailer and it was able to cover my house payment, two car payments and the electric bill with that book. And that's when I knew that I could make this thing work. And along the way, in 1997, I actually started writing a syndicated newspaper column, or 1998, I started writing a syndicated newspaper column, which I'll tell you another story about that another time. But I actually wrote that for 10 years. And that's when I discovered the power of content marketing, because what I would do once I started building up my online business was I realized that I had this list. And you guys got to understand, man, this is back before there were people to teach you all this stuff. This was back before all the things that we take for granted now with list servers and being able to send out emails and publish um, videos on Facebook and automatically have all these communities that you can plug into. There was none of that. Right. And I, I realized that, was, that was back when you were excited to get an email. That was back when you could build a list by having a box on your website that says, join my newsletter. <laughs> you could get hundreds of people to sign up to be on a list because you put a box that said, join my newsletter. No benefits, no headline, no title to the newsletter. Just, you know, sign up here to get updates. Oh, hell yeah. I'll take some updates. Yeah. Remember whenever you used to. 
<laughs> you should go onto your computer and that little little mailbox thing will pop up. You've got mail. Exactly. That was the yeah. best. You've got mail. Or you'd hear that ding. Yep. You know, it was still before there was so much coming in, you would let it automatically have Outlook, um, Outlook or Outlook Express would would check the email every five minutes and then you'd hear the ding. Oh crap, I got mail. Let me go check. <laughs> um I forgot what I where I was in my little origin story here, which is uh so anyway, I got the thing up working for the guy and I got he he ended up firing me. But it was interesting because the day he fired me actually fired me over the phone over in, in my car. So I pay, I got, was, that was back before we had unlimited minutes. I was paying 35 cents a minute to have this jackass fire me. I was like, okay, let's keep this short. Okay. I'm fired. Great. I almost said the F word, but I was like, okay, whatever. Bye. But within 24 hours, it was interesting how the universe works because I had been concentrating on creating content. Oh, I know where I was. Anyway, I, I went back, but I got ahead of myself. So I got fired. I needed a way to build my list, a way to communicate with people. And by the way, he fired me for something I didn't do. And I'm not going to get into it because it doesn't matter. But he said I did something. I said no. He was looking for a reason to fire me anyway because, because I made this product and my name was Jim. My name still is Jim. His name, his name was Jim. And what was happening was people would call the office and they'd ask for Jim. And so the secretary would put him through to him and he'd say, Hey, this is Jim. They said, no, no other Jim. Oh, and that shit got on his nerves quick. Yeah. So he, you know, he just, anyway. Um, but what I realized was that I needed, I needed to stay on people's radar. And this is where we're crossing over between sales copy and content. I needed a way to stay on people's radar that was unique and that was going to be valuable for them. And so I didn't have a lot of time because I got fired from my job and I, I had to work on a bunch of other stuff and I actually got another job that was half time. So I said, okay, how can I stay on these people's radar? And that's when I realized that these articles that I was writing for the newspaper, I should be sending those articles out to the list and in and i know it sounds obvious but back then it was breakthrough it was i married my offline newspaper column to an online column and then i did something that people take for granted now i said i said feel free to share this article on your site in your email list just leave it intact and give me credit so all these people were like, damn, these articles are good. Let me share this with my list. So I had this big share effect going on by creating great content that was worthy of going. Actually, I was in, I think, four different print newsletters to newspapers. And I was in magazines all over the place. And I realized instead of trying to get these people to pay me for my articles, let everybody publish my articles as long as I had the byline. So all of a sudden I started appearing in hundreds of online newsletters. I was on hundreds of sites. I was appearing in real print magazines and real print newsletters because I wasn't worried about making people pay me 10 bucks for a column right. or something. That was like and the social so, media, you know, effect of the day. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The exact same effect, but I was doing it with print and I was doing it with, I mean, everything, blog, all media. Making a website was a pain in the ass. I mean, if you, if you wanted to have like what we have take for granted now with WordPress or with Shopify, with publishing an article and automatically having it added to your menu and all that other stuff, there was none of that. So that's, so every Tuesday, because my deadline for the newspaper was Tuesday at 10 o'clock. So about Tuesday at 9.59 in the morning when I was finishing up my article, as soon as I sent the article out to, over to my editor, then I would send the article out to my list and say, hey, here's my article. I mean, this is really pro -y what I did here. Hey, here's my newspaper article that goes out tomorrow, but you get the scoop today. And I would send it out to everybody. And I did this for a couple of years. And then one day I missed a, a, a week and our inbox got flooded with all these people saying, Hey, where's Jim? Is Jim? Okay. Did the article did, I didn't get my article. Am I still subscribed? I mean, just, and I'm not talking just a couple, I'm talking flooding the wow. inbox. 
And that was when I really realized that was about 2002. That was when I really realized the power of regular communication, regular quality communication with in content without going overboard in the sales stuff. You, you, not everything has to be a sales message, but I also learned to balance the sales message with the other. And so that's kind of how I got started. That's where all this came from. And the biggest thing, and we're going to hear Stu's uh, origin story with all this in, in a second, but the, the biggest thing I want to get across to you guys in this inaugural episode, we're going to be talking a lot about sales copy and how to make sales. And my buddy, Dave Lindenbaum, he says, Jim, you're not a sales copy writer. You're a biologist, a B-U-Y-ologist, because you show people oh, how to get people to buy. I, I said, like that. damn, that's good. That's better than I tried copywriting. To be, yeah, that, that was good. Uh, we might incorporate that. So maybe we'll have a biology lesson every once in a while. <laughs> and uh, so I just want to tell you all, though, that being able to sell is a learned skill. I sucked at, at selling. My, but my first seven jobs that I quit or got fired from in 18 months when I graduated from college all involved commission sales. Mm. So in order for me to eat, to make, and I didn't eat real well, in order for me to make my car payment, which was late quite often, I had to learn how to sell belly to belly, person to person, eyeball to eyeball. And I will admit to you, I absolutely bit the big one at it. I was bad. So I, if mm. I can learn, you can learn. That's the big thing I want you to take away from this episode. So Stu, tell yes, everybody sir. about your about your background and how you came to become Stu Smith, world famous Navy SEAL fitness writer. And then we'll talk about how we met and how, how we came. Yeah. Together. So when I, I went to the Naval Academy after that, I served in the Navy for eight years and I knew I wanted to do something in fitness. I just didn't know what, um, went back to school a little bit and, you know, was working for, or some, you know, physiology courses and, uh, some certifications, you know, that would allow me to do something a little more professionally in, in fitness. Okay, I need to, I need to interrupt. Stu's being modest. Stu graduated from the Naval Academy, went to BUDS, which is the hardest military training in the world, became a Navy SEAL, was a Navy SEAL for eight years and is just a complete and total fitness badass. Um, and so keep going. Well, thank you. I, I am, I, I do enjoy fitness, uh, you know, personally. And you know, so it was a passion of mine and, uh, and I knew I wanted to do something with it. And I actually am a good writer. I grew up a, um, a kid that had two eyes on every paper, two sets of eyes on every paper that went to an English teacher because my mom was an English teacher and my dad was a journalist. And it's just, I learned how to write, you know, before Whether you wanted to or yeah, not. Yeah. It was just one of those things. I, I, I learned how to do it. I read a lot. I wrote a lot. So, you know, anyway, so it seemed logical to, you know, try to find something to write about. Well, I knew it was fitness. And so I got pretty good. I went back to the Academy as an instructor. I got pretty good at coaching kids on acing fitness tests. Uh, I would get all the kids that would fail them. And before they got kicked out, they got to see me and we would, you know, change the way they did things, work things, you know, get them in a little better shape. They would pass, they'd stay, they'd hug me, you know, it was all the, you know, good stuff. So I was like, this is really rewarding, really rewarding work. And um, so I, I got out after eight years and I started working out and writing about it. So I was a trainer started writing about it and, and I published was, a book too. I was lucky I was right as I was getting out I found a publisher a publisher was going around to all the military bases uh, service academies doing a service academy uh, book and I just happened to run the fitness program at the Naval Academy at the time and I said hey I have one it's kind of Navy SEAL based but um, it's already done Do you want to see it <laughs> I handed it to him and he's like holy mackerel this thing's already finished. All we need to do is take some pictures and it's done. And uh, so I actually had that published. It, I, I got really uh, lucky with the publishing, you know, and I've been publishing books with the same publisher since. So it's been 20 years now 
And we have, and that same book is in its third edition, right? What's the yeah, title? Of? Yeah, it still sells. It's a complete guide to Navy SEAL fitness. And then I have my latest series is that tactical fitness series you see behind me. Um, we've published 13 different books, but what I realized too is around the time Jim was getting online, I figured out about 2003, I was writing articles for military.com, working out as a trainer and selling books, you know, writing books. So it was decent. I mean, it wasn't great money. And, and I realized I could probably start making more money if I did eBooks. <clears throat> but I didn't want to compete with myself either. So I changed things up a little bit and I created personalized or individualized programs for every fitness test the military, law enforcement, and firefighter programs offer. And doing my research, I found that there are about 35 different fitness tests just in the United States alone that all these different agencies use. So I've started writing about all of them, started selling them as eBooks. And from then on, my business just completely flipped upside down and I no longer had in to spend a good way. in a good way. I no longer had to spend eight hours in a gym training people personally or doing group training. You know, I was making money while I was sleeping, selling eBooks and from there it grew. And, and I did it the same way Jim did. I would write articles. I would send those articles out to the internets and it was like the big it was like on the, the line yeah on the line it was like a big net that would pull people in to see you know the programs that i was selling and um and i still do that i've i've been doing it ever since and it's just been a blast and during the journey uh jim and i met he found me through i got him sucked in right into the funnel that from an article <laughs> it was yeah. an article it was an article maybe mixed with social media and then it came in and he saw my personalized training program that i offer online training online and he called me up we got him set up that was about five years ago turned him into the stud muffin he is today please <laughs> but but it's funny what that you say we're a product of the product it's one of the things that we talk about, you, you create content, it's content marketing. You think about it, the content and the stories and the stuff that you put out there, that's what makes people thirsty. And then your sales copy, your offers, your product pages, that's the sales copy. That's where you sell them a drink. I mean, you just want to keep it simple. You make people thirsty with your content and you sell them a drink with your sales copy. That's the way you got to look at it. And, and, Literally, when we say a product of the product, a product of the, actually, we're a product of the process. And the process is what we're going to be talking about in this podcast. Um, you know, Stu, I had a problem. My problem was that I had plateaued in my fitness. I had been fat and 40 and real fat and 42 and decided that I needed to make a change. I had a friend of mine who um, did some fitness stuff, was, had been in the Canadian Army, helped me get started again with fitness. And I got to a certain level and I plateaued. And so I wanted to improve my pull-ups. And so I've started looking around for just help with pull-ups. And I mentioned something in a, in a Go Ruck group on in a group on Facebook. And somebody said, oh, Stu Smith, he helped me to get ready for a 24-hour um, Go Ruck Heavy, which is a impressive thing to go through. And so I looked Stu up. I found an article he had written about doing pull-ups. I said, this is my guy. I went to his website. I saw his eBooks. I said, I don't want to buy an eBook. The eBook guy says, I don't want to buy an eBook. What's he got training me? And I saw he had his PT program, which was, it's like 350 bucks a quarter. I said, I'm in. And so I didn't even call him first. I signed up, gave my money, and I sat there for about 10 minutes. <laughs> I got to call him up. Like, hey, is this Stu Smith? He actually answered his phone. And I said, hey, is this Stu Smith? Yeah. Hey, is Jim Edwards? I just signed up for your, um, for your PT club. I'm really excited. I want to start. I'm just like fanboy gushed all over the guy. And he said, well, okay, well, let me send you. I said, you, you going to send me anything? You going to send me something like an intake form or something? I mean, I'm ready to go. I'm ready. I'm ready. And I remember I walked out and told my wife, she was out doing something with the chickens or in the garden. And I walked out there and I said, it was in November. And, and I said, Hey, I found this dude to, to help train me. It's going to be 350 bucks a quarter or whatever. And, and I said, I really want to do it. And she said, okay. 
I mean, I was expecting her to argue with me. She said, okay. So, but the cool thing about it was that I don't want to get all yeah. into it and stuff, but the, the, the coolest thing about it was that that's what kind of started. That's what started our friendship. I found Stu through the process and then Stu and I were working together, I guess, for about three months, four months, five months. And then Stu said to me one day, Hey, what's this ebook coach thing in your, in your email address? What's that all about? And yeah. what, tell, tell that part. That, of that was a huge piece because, you know, I, I've been selling ebooks at the time for, you know, over 10 years, maybe even closer to 15. And he just gave me like three tips right from the start. And I was like, okay, let me try some of this stuff, you know? And then he had a program that, that you, you put me through your program of how to write an ebook and, yeah, it was it was a different. Or, yeah. No, it was twenty. It was a different program where we were using wizards and and yes. habit forming and stuff. And it was twenty seven day book, which we're actually going to be doing launching here in the not too distant future. The twenty seven day book challenge, um, based on what I put you through. Yes, and I did a twenty seven book challenge because one thing I wanted to do and that, something I never had done was put an ebook, personalized, self published ebook, on Amazon. And it's not that I was lazy and couldn't do it. I just thought it was too difficult to do. And, you know, they didn't do that. But lo, lo and behold, Jim's process put me right through that, you know, actually wrote a really good book uh, in, in a month and got it out there. And, you know, everything that he says came, came true. It, it was ranked number one for that, uh, the first week of launching. You know, you take a snapshot of that and that's great for marketing. Um, and then, uh, you know, the book cover probably was the biggest thing that the, the biggest tip that he, he had taught me because I had just, you know, I, I didn't even have ebook covers. I just, if it was an FBI workout, it was, you know, you had like the FBI logo and FBI stuff. logo up there, probably copyright infringements or, or whatever, you know, it was just, <clears throat> but anyway, so I, uh, yeah. So I went to Fiverr, like he told me to and found a guy. And we went through 35 different eBooks and completely changed the look of my online store. And no kidding, 30% increase in sales just from that within a month. Yep. So that, that was really big. And I was, I was doing pretty well enough as it was. And, uh, you know, the fact that it, it jumped like that, I was shocked. And then you called me at the end of the year and you're like, dude, you put me in a whole different tax bracket. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was really nice. Um, and, and that's how we met. And then I kind of got the idea and I called him up and I said, Jim, I got this idea, something that I, I want to do with you. And I got the idea to write a book about do it yourself marketing. Cause really what we had been doing, you know, for, for years is, you know, using all types of marketing. So from social media was the new thing. Um, and, but we'd still use the other stuff. We would use, you know, handouts, you know, whenever you uh, would sell something and make a package and, you know, for advertising that you do radio advertising, TV advertising, print advertising, you name it. Right. And I wanted to come up with a system that would enable the average person who had a business to no longer be, in the business of just, if you're a real estate agent, you sell real estate. I wanted you to make people a marketing company that sells real estate. Right. Right. And really, if you think about it now, you have to be a media company, marketing, media marketing company that sells X. Right. right? If you're going to have an online business or even a local business, you know, for that yep. matter. So that is where we came up with the DIY Media Marketing Academy. And we have 24 classes, you know, that, that uh, we are, are putting in together and creating this, this new program. And that's really what this podcast is going to be. It's going to be, you know, copywriting, how to do that. But then we're also going to have, you know, the latest and greatest things that are changing in social media to, to help you use social media to market your business. And right. uh, we got a great, you know, curriculum for all of that. 
those will be the biology lessons. And yeah. Stu's, Stu's underplaying. He, he's been extremely successful with Instagram, also very successful with Facebook, very successful with YouTube. And so when we came together to create the DIY Media Marketing Academy, it worked, it worked really, really well. And then we realized um, recently, you know what? Instead of competing between uh, DIY Media Marketing Academy and the Jim Hours Method Premium, let's, let's combine those two together and really move forward as a team, 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 rather than feeling like we were competing with ourselves, which is really what we were doing. So that's why the, the biggest, and I, I think you would probably agree, Stu, the, the most important thing that any business owner does in their business is drive sales. And the way you drive sales is by content and sales copy. Content is what brings them in and sales copy is what sells them. And that's why we want to focus on this in this podcast. So that's what we're all about. We're super excited for you guys to join us. And um, I think this is a great place for us to, to just wrap this up. You're going to want to jump in on the next episode where, what are we talking about in the next episode, Stu? Next episode is, uh, why is copywriting so important? Well, there you go. I think that's an important, that's an important topic. So you guys are going to want to definitely tune in next time for that. I'm Jim Edwards. And Stu Smith. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, guys.